As we turn to our second month of studying and discussing Thomas Brooks' Precious Remedies Against Satan's Devices, we're moving in to consider 16 of Satan's devices, ways in which he longs to make use of whatever circumstances we're in as tools that might draw us away from the love of God. Notice this month that the first eight devices Satan employs are devices specifically attacking us in our religious practice. Satan is not content merely to try to draw us away from God and religion. He's crafty, and his wiles take the form of so many temptations that can twist and distort religion's exercise. I think as you'll read, you'll find, sadly, that these are the sorts of things we can observe, we can hear about, and tragically, each of us can know in some respect. Notice he also goes on to offer eight more devices where Satan pounces upon seasons of sorrow or times of anxiety. We know that too, don't we? Each of us knows what it is to journey through times that are trying and difficult, sorrowful and depressing, and seasons that can induce fear and anxiety. And Satan knows how to pounce upon those very feelings. Notice, however, the way in which Brooks can point to a Bible chock full of promise and hope. A Jesus who repeatedly tells us, have no fear. And a God who through his prophets and apostles calls us to understand holy and true religion. As we read, let's be alert to the ways in which even our best practices can and have been distorted and demand not only reform but ongoing renewal, as well as the way in which each of the seasons of life, times for joy and times for crying, can be twisted, distorted, leading to bitterness or anger, to anxiety and profound depression, and noticing that God has a word As Brooks will show, the Psalms have words to be said from God to God for all those seasons. And we need to be prepared for ourselves and for the brother of whom we are a keeper, for the sister who we need to love and encourage, for the body of Christ to which we are given. 